moving, moving on to our second fight on tonight's card. This one, Thailand versus China. And in the blue corner, Giao Zhen. He's from China, has, or he's 25 years old, stands at 168 centimeters, has 20, 20 fights, 17 wins, and three losses. He trains and fights out of LKD Muay Thai, and he's from Zhangji, China. And now moving on to his opponent, fighting out of the red corner from Thailand, Lotus Pumpamuang. 22 years of age, 167 centimeters tall, has a total of 81 fights, 65 victories, 14 losses, two draws. Currently training out of Pumpamuang Gym, and he is from Dak Province in the northern part of Thailand. That's one place I still need to visit, Dak. Especially this time of year. Get some final instructions there from the referee, and the fighters will have that traditional Mong Kong removed. It's considered a sacred headband here in Thailand. A lot of customs involved with putting the Mong Kong on the fighter's head and also removing it. As you can see, the cornerman there saying a final prayer before they take that off. Yeah, a lot of people. They confuse it for a religious ceremony, but it's more of a ceremony within Muay Thai. One of the many that the sport does have as far as ceremonies. Absolutely. I mean, we saw the Y crew just now. Here we are. Good referee gets it out, gets the fight started. So what we can expect from Lotus is some really hard right kicks. As for... Guo very strong with his left hand. So we'll see here. I mean, it says that on our sheet, even though he is standing in the orthodox position. Good left kick there from Lotus. Well, it says here that he has a strong right kick, but to be fair, John, that was a really powerful left kick as well. <laughs> Ambidextrous. Another good low kick there from Lotus. Guardo taking his opponent off his feet, showing, trying to show some dominance early on in this fight. Another low kick connects there for the Chinese fighter, putting his combinations together well once again. Yeah, he's looking sharp with those punches. Got the tie in the back foot. And we have seen Guizhong compete in the past. One thing we know is that is not a strong suit is the clinch. And he initiated that just now, so perhaps he's improved over time. We'll yeah, it looks like he was holding his own inside the clinch. You see him stuffing that glove in the face of Lotus. We'll have to have a look, see how things go. Once again, initiating the clinch and putting the glove just right in front of Lotus's face. And you can tell that, well, he does want to fight on the outside, or maybe not. Seems very happy to exchange these with Lotus. Because as we know, John, I mean, you've been here a couple of years now, and then you know that a lot of fighters, they might have a kickboxing background, see them, and think they can hold their own in Muay Thai, but once they get caught in the clinch, it's a completely different story. Yeah, very different world. There's nothing as humbling as being thrown around by a teenager when you uh, come to Thailand and train in the gym here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and you hear that story quite often. Good punch to the midsection there by Guo. Tried for the overhand, but just missing. Just that clinch is just, it's an art within an art. It takes years to master, really, and the ties they've been doing it since they started training, seven, eight years old, so it's almost second nature. Absolutely, I mean, a lot of gyms that would do it for at least an hour every single day. Just shows you how important it is, and Guo, once again, doing well in the clinch, but this time, getting taken off his feet. Good turn there by Lotus to counter the inevitable knee. Drawing a smile there from his Chinese counterpart. Good, solid elbow right down the middle as well. Yeah, Lotus playing it almost like Berg Ban, trying to counter his opponent each time. But I mean, Ooh. if you do want to be a counter fighter, you have to be very, very good at it. Lotus's elbow is looking very dangerous right now inside the clinch. He's, well, has to be very careful here. And that is the end of the first round.
Here we go, coming in to the second round of action for our second bout of the evening. Of course, it is a Gun Chayo tournament at 127 pounds in Group B. Lotus Pumpamong in the red corner and Guo Zheng in the blue. The fight started off seeming like it was all Guo Zheng, but towards the end, I mean, we saw some good counters coming in from Lotus, just like that one there, John. Yeah, it's starting to look very, very dangerous with those counter elbows. Coming right down the middle with that one. And if there's one way to stop a puncher, that's 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 it right there with the elbows. It's the elbows is closing the distance, clinching up. There we go. Referee Gritsada gets started with the second round. Just exchanging kicks to begin with. Yeah, I think they got the stats wrong because his left kicks are what's really coming in right now. Hard and fast. About seven in a row, unanswered. But it could be another case that, well, he is fighting a Southpaw fighter, or excuse me, he's fighting another Orthodox fighter, and all of a sudden he's decided to, well, maybe he's just can't catch the left kicks, and we're seeing that exactly. Good strategy there from Lotus Pumpamuang as Guo Zhong tries to get close. Yeah, it just goes to show how simple tactics really work here in Muay Thai. You don't, you don't need anything tricky. Yeah, I mean, to there, win a fight. There was that one Bruce Lee quote, I can't remember off the top of my head, it was something about training a thousand kicks instead of uh, a thousand times, or training one kick a thousand times instead of training a thousand kicks one time. And that's what you see here in Thailand, when the kids start out training, the trainers really do make them do that every day until they've mastered that technique. Yeah, it's the roundhouse kick, the really deadly roundhouse kick that we see so often in Muay Thai that wins a lot of fights. Oh, the roundhouse kick, uh, the roundhouse kicks and the clinch, of course. Another good body strike there from Guo Zheng. Yeah, that seemed to slow down, Lotus. Gotta wonder if he's gonna start going back to that body attack. Yeah, but then once he received the body attack, John, immediately Lotus went in for the clinch. Showing a sign that he may be hurt and another body strike there from Guo Zheng. And that might have changed the course of the fight. Guo Zheng, he sees it. He's trying to go for that. Unfortunately, he didn't land that knee, but you got to imagine when they break, he's going to keep attacking with that, that left shovel hook. And that was a, a throw by Lotus. Lotus perhaps trying to buy himself some time, being on the floor of both him and his opponent. It's a good strategy if that was the case. Goes with another body strike. I mean, he knows that he hurt Lotus with that body strike, so he's going to continue to go back to it again and again. And why not? I mean, if you know that, that you can hurt your opponent with a certain strike, could be game over pretty soon. Good job of following it up with that overhand right that time as well. Doesn't look like Lotus is out of the fight just yet, though. Not just yet, but one thing's for sure is that he has slowed down compared to the first round. Good knee, though, to the midsection. Ooh. And Gore's not doing anything about it. That's a horrible sign right there. Taking three or four unanswered knees to the midsection. Yeah, Lotus starting to turn the fight around now. Good right hand from him. And this has turned into a really good fight now, John. Grueling matchup on both ends. Both of them know that they can hurt their opponent. And oh, once again, taking the knees to the midsection and not answering back. What a good side for going on. Oh, that's three, four strikes to the midsection. And Goal finally able to get out of the clinch. Bet re-enters the clinch once again. Not the best of strategies, John. No. With those knees coming in like that, no. That's the end of the second round. Good round again from Lotus. And now coming into the third and final round for our Gun Shayo 127 pound 
tournament in Group B semi-final matchup. And that was a shot that we saw definitely hurt Lotus, but he took it very well. I'll tell you one thing, John, these Hill Tribe fighters, they're built very differently. And you can see there, once he already took the strikes, I mean, he came back with some knees of his own, and that's what really, I would say, won, won Lotus that round. Yeah, it looked like he, he really did turn that round in his favor towards uh, the final moments there. Let's see if he can continue that as we go into our third round. That's right. I mean, Gua, he, I, I, I'd be honestly, I'd be honest to say he needs a knockout here. Almost like what we saw from the other semifinal bout, the third round, Emmanuel. He really needed a knockout, but he really went for it. And that's exactly what what we want to see here at Lumpini Stadium. Let's see if Gua Zhang decides to do the same. Slow start with the round, trying to go for the right hand already. Good kick to the midsection there by Gua. Good start from the Chinese fighter. Seems like Lotus is somewhat taking it easy so far. Good low kicks there and a return from Lotus. Gua going with another low kick of his own. Yeah, starting to slow down already though, Gua. It's time and time we see, again we see that when the fighter comes out at the beginning of the round, he looks sharp. But you gotta be able to keep that up throughout the entire round. You, you, know, you can do it the first 15, 20 seconds. But once you start slowing down, that Lotus is gonna take over. And Lotus now not blocking the low kicks. Almost blocking them like sex son. You gotta say. wonder if he even respects the kicks at this point. I don't think so. I mean, the power is just not there anymore from Guo, but there is a role in Muay Thai, an unwritten role, where you just gotta block every single low kick because they will start to build up no matter what. And let's not forget, Lotus, if he wins this fight, he does have another match coming up to tonight. So it'd be in his best interest to start blocking them now. Another kick to the midsection there. Gua tries to return with some of his own, but blocks there and not, not so accurate, I'd say. Both fighters preserving themselves now. You got to imagine, for me, I think it's a, it's a very close fight. I think whoever takes this round is probably going to win it, so. But they're both hanging back. Yeah, they're both hanging back. I said, I'm quite surprised with Lotus. I mean, he was having a lot of success in the clinch. I'm surprised he's not going back to that once again. I spoke too soon. Here we are in the clinch. Knees incoming to the midsection. Three knees, four knees. Can he go for a fifth? He does. Corner of Lotus looking very pleased with his handiwork there. And his knee work too. And now just keeping Guo away. I mean, that's how important the clinch and knees are. Despite seeing all the strikes that we saw from Guo already in this round, I mean, those knees in the midsection, those five unanswered knees, those have already put Lotus so far in front of head, ahead in this, this round. Good counter elbow again by Lotus. Yeah, we haven't seen those elbows since the first round. He's been doing uh, a lot of work there inside the clinch with the knees, but good body shot coming in from Gua. Well, he tell you, don't call it a comeback, because it's been there for years. A little Cool J reference for those that don't get it. <laughs> I was going to say you're dating me, but you just dated yourself. <laughs> Usually I'm the one that does that to myself. <laughs> Absolutely. Good good dodge away in the clinch, though, by Lotus. It just goes to show how important the clinching is in Muay Thai. And we saw that in this match. Lotus are doing a terrific job at that. Another good knee to the midsection there by Lotus. Lotus very happy to let the clock wind down. And that is the end of our second bout of the evening. A good contest. Gore tried to go for it in the end. But on my unofficial scorecard, I believe a Lotus probably took all three rounds. Came out strong, Gua, but after that body kick, just seemed to go downhill from there. Yeah, when they the... did engage inside the clinch. That's Lotus. right. There was a body kick, then there was the knees to the midsection that really changed the course of the fight. And let's not forget the counter elbows. But overall, fine display from Lotus. Let's go to the official decision. และนี่คือความมันของ LWC Super c h a m p นั่นเองนะครับสังเวียนนี้ต้องบอกเลยครับว่าเดือนทุกคู่วันนี้ต้องลุ้นกันต่อนะครับว่าแต่ละคู่นั้นใครจะได้รางวัล Fight of the Night หรือ Fighter of the Night กันด้วยนะครับแล้วผลการตัดสินมวยรอบคู่นี้อยู่ในมือผมแล้วเรียบร้อยครับ
the winner by unanimous decision goes to Red Carter. Lamas, who won the match? It was the winner of the match. The winner of the match was Red Carter. 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 คู่ชิงครับคู่ที่เจ็ดคู่สุดท้ายของการในสดวันนี้นะครับเบิกบานลูกเมืองเพชรที่ยืนรออยู่แล้วจะต้องไปพบกับโลตัสพุ่งพันม่วงนะครับงานนี้ไทยดวลเดือดเกือบไทยอะไรก็เกิดขึ้นได้บนเวทีแห่งนี้นะครับ LWC ซีซูเปอร์แชมป์นั่นเองนะครับและช่วงหน้ามาลุ้นกันต่อครับความมันในพิกัด146ปอนด์ครับองค์บากสิทธิ์สรสเสือคุณข่าวจากฉะเชิงเซาครับปะทะกับวาเลนตินคอมพักเนียนครับนักชกจากประเทศฝรั่งเศสห้ามพลาดครับ Next Challenge vs France นะครับ Don't Miss LDUC Super Champ